Hello everybody, it's me Trevor. I'm getting ready to head back to the Philippines on another service trip where I'll be going back to build houses and gardens just like I have been for the last three years. I wanted to give you an opportunity to take a look at some of the stuff that we got accomplished on my last trip when I was over there where I went to an island named Bantayan Island that was devastated by Typhoon Yolanda. While I was there for seven months, I got the children all to come together to help plant gardens, build houses, do all kinds of things to improve the quality of life and clean up the area. And so I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of some of the things that we got accomplished when I was there, including houses, gardens, community well. Um, so here, take a look at some of the things that we got accomplished. Here you go, enjoy. All right, last minute recording before I leave. We got Pedro and Al June here picking some beans along the fence that we, we planted. We got the house here that we built for Jerome and now for Chris. Chris now lives there. When I first got to Bantine Island, Jerome and his six month pregnant wife, Era, were staying in this tarp covered shelter you see in the background. As a thank you for all the help Jerome gave me in the initial stages of building the gardens, we built this house for him. Total cost was $300. Uh, here, outside this house, we have the garden here, or one of the gardens that we started. Uh, been, got some bananas and grass. One thing that we found in abundance were banana trees. We would use them as the basis for our gardens to plant in between houses for shade, privacy, and also so plants like beans and alabate could grow up them for support. All right, then we have, here's the house that I've been working on here, turned into a playhouse for the kids. Upon arriving back in Bantayan Island, I was faced with all kinds of destruction, like you see here. Houses completely knocked to the ground, where the 200 mile an hour winds from Typhoon Yolanda destroyed almost every single thing on the island. Houses obliterated, families displaced, trees ripped out of the ground. This house had been sitting here for four months with nobody cleaning it up. So I went to the owner and asked permission and see what they were doing with it. The owner said he had no interest in cleaning up the house or doing anything with it. He said I could have it, do with as I pleased. So this is what I did with it. Uh, all around here we have volleyball down here. One of the projects we had the most fun with was taking this area, which was originally just rubble and weeds, and turning it into a volleyball court, where the kids would play all day, every day, after school. Here's the volleyball in progress. And around here we have the garden all around. We got okra, peppers, green onions, bananas, uh, so, Sealy, something called bitter melon. Uh, all the way around, we got this raised bed here. These gardens were the primary reason for me to go to the Philippines, to be able to create a space where the local village children could come together and learn how to plant and grow different fruits and vegetables that they normally would not have access to. Oh, we got bananas growing. There's bananas there. This entire area was yeah, filled nice with rubble, and now it is filled with yeah. fruits and vegetables for eating and grass. All right. Play. So this is all okra, sealy, green onions. We got a flower here. Inside here, we got many bananas growing. These are all bananas up here. Lots and lots of bananas. We got some fruit trees down here. We got jackfruit, grape, which is doing really good. Atis, uh, guava. What better investment in the future than to plant a fruit tree? A trip to another island, I returned with a whole bunch of fruit trees for the children. At least one fruit tree for every kid, over 27 different kinds. I, each child was allowed to pick one fruit tree and choose where to put it. Some of the kids were so excited that they couldn't wait. Even this one started digging with its bare fingers and was so proud of his fruit tree. Cherry tree right here in the middle, surrounded by this little track for running. This entire area was filled with rubble that the kids would play in barefoot. Now it is filled with fruits and vegetables and grass where the children can run, eat, and play safely. There's the house here, a little meditation spot up there in the middle. Um, nice open window, gets good breeze. 
Let's see here. Got a CR for everybody to use. Got water over here, bathroom, septic tank down below. Over here is the little kitchen area for cleaning and stuff. Let's see, back here around the back of the house, we got bean trellis growing up here. When I first got there, this area was completely unusable, filled with trash, rubble, broken glass, and poop. It smelled awful and nobody went back there at all. We went through and cleared all the garbage, made a nice path, put raised beds on both sides, planted beans and vegetables, and now it is a walkway that people use almost every single day going back and forth between school and their homes. Over down beneath, we got this stuff called alabate, growing really, really good. Some of these, some of these leaves, you know, they're as big as my hand. And they're absolutely delicious. Very, very good leaves. You can just pick them and eat them. My shop. Delicious. So those are growing really well. I've got a whole bunch of fresh brand new ones down here that are just starting to grow up. Let's see what we have around back behind the house. Behind the house we have a, a star apple growing right here. Here's the house. Behind. We got one of the windows, temporary windows only. These are going to be replaced with something later on. Uh, we got a rain gutter, catch the water. The water flow down over here, big bucket over here. Use that water for in the in the bathroom. All right, back here we have the tr tree. The area under this fruit tree was one of the worst in the village, filled with trash, broken glass, and bob wire. The children would have to walk through this every day on their way to school. We came through and cleared all the trash, planted grass, and put a ring of bananas around the outside of the fruit tree. But the best part was the swing in the middle. The children loved it. They would come up with all kinds of fun games to play with each other with the circle of grass and the swing in the middle. The swing here, this, this swing was one of the branches that broke off the tree when uh, we were cleaning the kids were playing and the tree branch broke and usually it this stuff rots very fast but this swing for some reason is doing really really good it hasn't broken yet there's another fence we got beans all up and growing around picking some more beans over here Got this area over here is gonna get planted with corn here shortly. Got a garden in here that unfortunately did not get utilized very much because um, we nobody has access to it. There's no gate, so nobody can get in there. So unfortunately that was a little bit of a waste of time and money. But we got a lot of nice things that we can have access to. Over here we have another area we planted corn Lots and lots of corn here, along with some fruit trees down below. Some fruit trees down here. You can't really see them. But here's here's one of the fruit trees. And here's another one. All around the village, there are areas that are filled with trash and weeds. I would bring the children together to clear these areas out and plant corn and squash. Even the two-year-olds would be out there planting. All who shared in the work would share in the harvest. But yeah, we got lots of corn. Kids all planted the corn. Uh, we got bananas here that we planted around the houses. Around each one of the houses, we would plant bananas for shade and privacy. Uh, let's see what else we got. So this house here was a pile of rubble when I found it, and I. We've been able to clean it and turn it into something nice for the kids to play in. There's the helper's house. Jerome and Chris live over there. They got a nice kitchen that we built on the back also. Let's see if I get a... There's the kitchen. The kitchen that we built. The kitchen that these guys were using was this falling apart 
wood contraption where they would have to stand out in the rain over an open fire. The kitchen we built then has metal roof, cement cooking area, and sand floor all enclosed. With a little circle brick, hollow blocks going all the way around, sand floor, got a hammock over here, garden, I uh, got shower area, a little circle of grass with a a little hole here that the kids can go in and out for when they're playing volleyball, if, whenever the ball comes over here. We had to put up a net here because the ball kept uh, bouncing into here and, you know, breaking the plants and, you know, by putting a net up, it keeps the volleyball in. We had to also put a net over here. Um, many of the vegetables kept getting hit by the ball, so we were trying to protect them. But, uh... So here's the house. Uh, it's got a, this is the outdoor kitchen that we built here. It's got area here for sitting or standing or trash or whatever. And inside here we have, this was made for uh, building fires in, but we never really utilized it. We just used the, the gas stove for the most part, but it is made for building fires. Kids mostly use it to sit in. Those are their chairs with their little table. We cook right here. Of everything I did in the Philippines, this was by far my favorite part. To bring the children together to cook the very vegetables that they themselves grew. To see them take part in the whole process from planting to growing to eating. To making a meal to share with all of their brothers and sisters was a beautiful thing to witness. What it is, the kitchen is a kitchen's a small version of the house you know, it's got the same the same design with the two things at the bottom two things there so you know little little fun fun kitchen area over here for the green onion so lots of vegetables around to eat try to do cooking whenever we have vegetables when I arrived here four months after the storm this house was still nothing but rubble filled with broken hollow blocks, nails, and broken glass. The kids would play here barefoot with each other, running around and building little forts. After getting permission to clean it up, I brought the children together, and we cleaned all the rubble and made the area into a wonderful area for them to play and run around in. Here's future basketball hoop. We don't have it yet. Come inside here. It's a little messy because we're getting packed, getting ready to leave. Got beans here that just got picked. Got all the tables, rainbow tables all the way around. There's my bag. I'm ready to head back to the U.S. Unfortunately, over here we got more tables. We had to cover, color everything because the kids kept coloring on it on things. Children of all ages love to do art, but when there is a lack of art supplies. It is usually the table and the walls that take the brunt of their artistic inspiration. We got over here is where we sprout the seeds. We got a bunch of cucumber and watermelon and uh, some corn, passion fruit. A bunch of peppers over here getting sprouted. After planting hundreds of seeds outdoors and having almost no results, we moved to sprouting almost everything exclusively indoors. There's the window looking out through the garden. I'm going to climb up here. <clears throat> what began as an area covered in rubble and uneven rock was slowly converted into a multi-use area filled with fruit trees and vegetables for the kids to eat and play and enjoy. So there's the garden or one of, one of the gardens all the way around. Then on the inside of the house, kind of set up nicely for the kids to play, run around, build things. These are two of the guys that have been helping me the most. Got Pedro and Al June here. <laughs> the downstairs area was devoted entirely to the kids. They helped build the tables and we would use them for all kinds of activities like cooking competitions or drawing competitions growing vegetables, or playing any number of games that we came up with. All right, 
Let's see. We got upstairs. It's in the middle of uh, being blocked up so I could go. So that's what the boards are here for. I'm gonna close it up. <coughs> but upstairs, got a nice little meditation spot right here. It's uh, overlooks the garden and everything out this way. So nice little spot to sit. Got windows overlooking the beans, alabate. There's the garden over there. I'm really sad that that didn't get utilized. Let's see. Then off on the other side, got village out here. There's Jerome and Chris's house there. Their parents' house. Uh, Rhea, JR's house. All these, all these white houses that you see here with the red roofs. All of these have been donated houses. They all popped up within a week. They built about 40 of them all around here. Let me see if you can see some more over here. Oh yeah, you can see all the houses over here that they got built. There's many of them. They popped up. All of these houses have been donated by a group called Maltas. And they, uh, they came through and built a whole bunch of houses. So really cool for them. Now a whole lot of people have nice houses. Uh, here's where I've been staying. Some of what I've been up to. This is the main reason I came here to plant all these gardens. Um, plant the gardens so these guys have food to eat. So yeah, that's why I'm here. And this is a little bit of what I got done while I was here. So hope you enjoy.